Welcome to Go Get Great, the podcast for aspiring entrepreneurs and ambitious small business owners. I'm your host, Brittany, owner of Brittany Miller Socials and mother of three. Go Get Great is all about helping you make life and business work together. You'll learn about the fumbles that helped get me and my guests to where we are today so you don't have to make them. So come join the journey with Go Get Great. Good morning. I am so excited to welcome today's guest, Emma. Emma is a life coach, creative entrepreneur, and intuitive guide. Her role in this world is to inspire and empower people to live greatly. And let me tell you, she is going to help you do that in today's episode. She really focuses on helping you expand and be who you were born to be. And she does this through energy work, meditation, psychic channeling, mindset coaching, and facilitation. She is the founder of Source Oneness, her business, a transformative coaching company for life and business. Emma is currently on a mission to empower conscious leaders to shine their light in the world. So I am so excited to have Emma on today because she is absolutely fantastic and uh, we've connected before. So there's a little bit of a fun piece of info later. No, you can just cut this out um, to shine their light in this world. I am so excited to have Emma on today because I know that she has some fantastic advice and information to help you really find your authentic self and do the inner work to help you create a life and business that is exactly as you imagined it. All right. Good morning, Emma. Welcome to the Go Get Great podcast. I am so excited to have you here today. Uh, Would you mind starting with an introduction for my audience so they can get to know your wonderful self? Thank you for having me. Um, Yes, I'm Emma. I'm an intuitive coach, um, energy healer, and artist. That's what I do. (laughs) I know. I was. It's always fun introducing yourself, isn't it? You're like, wait, what do I do now? There's been so many iterations of my business. Yes, (laughs) exactly. That is so true. And I, uh, I always do my research before I have people on my podcast. Emma and I had actually connected at an online networking event and we've chatted before. So I knew her, but I wanted to make sure that I kind of like had my facts straight. So when I was doing some research on my website, one of, or on your website, one of the first things that caught my attention is that it says energy mindset and action. So I would love to start with that today because I really feel like that reflects who you are and what you do. Uh, But just also, those are like really great words to kind of think about for your business. Yes. I mean, that is the most powerful part of the whole website. (laughs) Like that's, that's the thing that sits (laughs) under the core of everything that I do. And it's basically energy mindset action is the strategy that I take when I'm creating anything or coaching or training, any of that stuff. Really coming back to my first point is working with energy what's the vibe what's going on and then look like doing that work subconsciously to understand energetically okay what's going on Mm -hmm. then moving into our conscious awareness of like mindset wise what's playing out what are our beliefs what are we thinking what are we doing Mm -hmm. in that sense and then taking action so making sure energetically Mm -hmm. like are we're in alignment before we start taking action because I see a lot of people trying to take action and they're like their mindset's off all their energy is off and like once you get your energy mm-hmm. and your mind in alignment and then you go for action oh like a whole bunch of miracles open up for you <laughs> like flow states things happen yeah yes And you know what, that makes so much sense. And I'm kind of learning a lot more about the power of energy and mindset, which is what we've chatted about previously. But I feel like there's still some people out there that are like, "Mm, I don't know how I feel about this. So I kind of wanted to reframe this for those people that are maybe still a little bit skeptical, but basically what you've just outlined is the foundation of how I start with my clients in a practical sense too. I was like, you have to think about what your goals are, which is your energy and the passion you have behind your business. And then you need to think about where you want to go before you can take the action. Because a lot of times people are just kind of here, there and everywhere. And that's when things are not aligning and they're not getting the results. So basically the same concept, you need to figure out what your energy is, put your mindset behind it, and then do the action steps to make it happen. 
Yeah, and it's then like once you've taken the action, no, that's take okay. back in to where you're at energetically, and then going, okay, well, what's mm-hmm. the next? Step? Like, what needs to shift? And and the mindset part as well also comes into like how you see yourself because you're going to create how you see yourself mm. and like that minds like what your mind is processing how you're making decisions and that's kind of like the process that goes over and over again so it's not just like doing that and then getting the next step it's like oh I'm like energetically a little bit close to where I want to go and like tuning into the energy Mm -hmm. of it thinking more about the being of who you're being as you're doing it rather than like Mm -hmm. all the things you have to get done to do that thing (laughs) <laughs> yes yeah ignore the to-do list for a minute that can be overwhelming that does not help your energy uh so for people that are kind of looking to take more aligned and energetic action in their business how do you recommend they get started in that energy phase to really focus on something that's gonna feel good and work well for them uh probably meditate would be my first space like take some time to self-reflect be okay. with yourself um mm-hmm get on YouTube, okay, you know, get on YouTube, find some meditations at this loads of energy meditations. If you're starting off, or if you're feeling like, you know, find a coach or somebody to really teach you energetics, then go to that space. But just taking the time to just feel into yourself. Like we have like all been doing energetics our whole life. Like this isn't new. Hmm. This isn't okay. something new and different. Like we're not re- reinventing the world. We're just becoming aware of it the conversation is changing Mm. our language is developing around it that's all that's different we have like energetically been switched on our whole life this is how we sense and feel like if you look at babies like they're going to pick up the energy in a room Mm. you know you're passing the baby around and then it gets the person with like the oh they feel a bit weird and they start crying like they know the energy (laughs) so we have been talking about (laughs) like well this is this is part of humanity it's a really basic foundational level Mm -hmm. the conversation that's going on in the coaching spaces and development spaces is about just coming back into that awareness of what's going on rather than being in our head Mm. and our mindset and like over complicating things and the the chit chat and noise and being like I need to go and do 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 it's then going actually let's just Mm -hmm. come back to the basics let's come back into our energy how are we feeling what's going on have we got what we need and it's it, it's not massively revolutionary it's not like this new new thing <laughs> we've been doing it for a long time so I think if you are listening to things about energetics and manifestation and all of this stuff just realizing the wording and the language is quite new and it's you know a bit sexy a bit of marketing mm. bit of sales in there beware if you're on the old Instagram yeah but at the end of the day, the core foundations of it are you are very much, you know, common sense, intuitive wisdom, you know, knowing yourself. Mm. You know, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I'm so glad that you phrased it that way. It's like all things that we know and we have done, we may have watched touch with some of it as we've kind of grown up and been influenced by culture, but it goes back to kind of the fundamentals. And you know what? You are hundred percent right with that baby example. I see it. Like every time you go and visit my family, like my dad and my brother are like the, are you sure I have to hold them? And that's when he starts crying, but he never does that with anybody else. So it's really nice to kind of have that reframe there and kind of see it from that perspective because yeah, like manifestation as a word is like really popular right now. And a lot of people are like, either yeah let's do it or like "Eh, I don't know about it because I feel like we have really kind of like I said lost touch with that part of ourselves because it's kind of seen as a little bit out there yeah and I think if we bring it back to that just you know understanding from a spiritual point understanding this ancient wisdom that has been around for a long time and coming into manifestation Mm -hmm. I think where it's gone recently with like the law of attraction and all of this stuff like just taking mm. a moment to pause and be like, okay, finding your own truth in this. There's so much out there. There's so much noise. There's so many great spiritual teachers or coaches. And then there's there's some really interesting ones as well where I'm like, is that right? So empowering yourself firstly to <laughs> cherry pick. Even what I'm saying, like if it's not resonating, <laughs> it's true. Like that is totally okay. You've got to find your own truth in this. How I look mm-hmm. at manifesting is that we are constantly manifesting our lives like whether you're conscious of it or not we're always manifesting I have an energy field that resonates with 
what's going on around me. You have an energy field that resonates mm-hmm. with what's going on around you. And so manifestation is just being conscious of that and being like, hey, I want to change my energy field. In the energy field I want, I want this beautiful mm-hmm. new car and I want this to be happening. And it's like, great. What energy mm-hmm. do I need to be vibrating at where that like connects into my energy field? Like what needs to shift mm-hmm. and change? So looking at it as like, we're always manifesting. Things are always happening in our lives. Like we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're always creating. Like if there's the energy of creation around us or we're creating our homes or our spaces or environment and then just going, okay, well, in terms of like manifestation in the sense of like, I want to manifest a new thing. It's then just going, okay, well, what needs to mm-hmm. shift energetically? Also, and then go back to energy, mind to action. Mm-hmm. What needs to shift energetically? What do I need to start doing? I need to believe I'm worthy of a new car. <laughs> Cause that's, that's going to open me up uh-huh. to believe I can do it. Like how much of like I, I know I know I drove some fancy cars and I'm like I can't do this. <laughs> this is not me. I remember driving a Ferrari for the first time and being like like driving around like an old granny and I'm like yeah no I'm not an energetic match for this like this is and my beliefs were like this is not in alignment. But then there's other things that are right. And yeah. Like, and then it's like okay well I find the one that works for me and then I take action towards it. So we're doing this all the time. Mm-hmm. Even if it's a cup of coffee, it's like the mm-hmm. energy. Of, oh, you know, I'm craving something. Let me think. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can go and get coffee. It's not. We're not thinking. Oh, do I deserve coffee or this? That? We're like, I'm going to go get coffee. <laughs> Great. The action is, I'm going to go down in the shop. I'm going to take my purse. These are the action steps. This is what we're going to do. So we are manifesting mm-hmm. all the time, mm. and then it kind of the level to which we're like opening up to different ways of things manifesting. So when we're talking about like other things, like mm-hmm. probably like money appearing or this thing's happening, it's the same principles of like energetically I'm opening up, I'm opening up to receiving, but then there's also some action in that as well that's needed. Like, do I need to be in the right place mm-hmm. at the right time? And so the, the kind of the understanding of that develops, but at the core of it, it's it's pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Like I like to think I'm always manifesting. And if the life around me is not what I want, I have manifested it and therefore I then get to create the next version. Mm. The next. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I create Mm -hmm. something I really want and then I'm like, great, I've experienced in that. What's the next thing? It's true. It's like constantly evolving, which is what we should be doing. So on the topic of manifesting and helping us vibrate at the energy levels we need to be at for the things we want. Do you have any, um, tips or recommendations to help us do that? I feel like there are certain things that are easier to do than others. Like you mentioned, going downstairs to get a coffee from the local Starbucks is obviously seemingly very easy to accomplish as opposed to, you know, um, manifesting new clients for your business or a trip that you really want to take or something like that. I'm going to challenge that one as a belief. I'm going to say, like, what if you played with the belief that getting a new client was as easy as going to Starbucks? Like, for whoever's listening to that Mm. one, play with that one and let me know how easy it gets. Like, what if it was easy? What if people were around? Mm -hmm. Uh, But opening up the possibility of these. But, yes, there are are things you can do. And so a lot of it is working on our energy field. So when I first stepped into this space, like, I was not in a good space. <laughs> like I was chronically burnt out. I was mm. was not in a good space. Like a lot of things in my life. And I got to a point where I was like, I just need to heal. I just need to fix whatever's going on. And as I found like the right mm-hmm. people, uh, I did a lot of energy healing, energy work. I'm like, oh, this is good. So I started lifting the heavier mm. energies out of my field. And I started releasing all of this baggage that I was carrying around with me. And as this started to shift, that's when things started manifesting. New things started coming in. So as we start Mm -hmm. to, like the first thing I would say, if you want to manifest something, make the space for it to come in. Like if you want a new partner, like stepping into, okay, well, releasing the old, you know, if you have a partner already, maybe (laughs) letting them go, but so there's space for anyone to come in. But, you know, if we've got baggage from relationships or things are like creating the space for that to come in, 
would be a way of doing it. Mm. And it's also then going deeper than I think a lot of manifestation, a lot of people for me aren't teaching it at the level that's needed. Like there's a depth. Mm, okay. Like law of attraction, you know, a lot of people are like, just do your manifestations, do this thing, do this framework. Actually, it's about healing and it's about coming within to yourself, <laughs> really going there, doing some inner work and being like, right, in terms of clients, do I feel like I deserve clients? Have I got the space for clients? Have I got the capacity? Um, I'm looking at who I need to be to be able to attract that new client. Who do I need to be hanging okay. around? Like, emotionally, another great tip is like, who will be hanging around? Like they say in the finance world, like the the five people you hang around with will kind of determine your income level. But that, like that, that's for all areas of life. Like, who are the people you're surrounding yourself with? I know when I had a previous partner, mm-hmm. he was like, didn't get anything that I was doing. And then my current partner has been a CEO and has started his own businesses. And like he mm-hmm. knows. Like, so it's completely different energy and it's opened me up in so many other ways. So being aware of what environments you're in, what you're surrounding yourself with. And, you know, you might be there going, mm-hmm. oh, you know, how do I start finding these people? Get on YouTube, start watching high vibrational people. <laughs> There's lots of different things. Like you're listening to this, you're hanging out with people like this, whether it's online or going yes. to networking or trying to make new friends in this space and just setting that intention to kind of find find the energies that resonate with who you want to become that mm. that's kind of that's the tip and so mm. there's, there's there's so many different tips and tricks and things to do but at the core of this it's it's about doing the inner work <laughs> it's not it's not the easiest it's like know thyself like for <laughs> me you know the more I've done that spiritual piece and that inner piece and that connection with self of like and I've cleared myself out and gone like now I'm able to receive that's where the magic's at (laughs) okay that makes sense so the first step like you said know yourself work on your belief and then the second part is kind of opening yourself up to the opportunities that may be able to present themselves and putting yourself in a position to be able to receive the opportunities okay I can handle that. That sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. And preparing, preparing, acting as if. So like, if I'm like, right, I want five new clients. Okay. Actually, this, what will my diary look like? I can even like hold those spots in my diary. And as I'm going to go, I'm going to go and imagine what I'd be doing in those, like, like in that time in my diary, I'm going to be like, right, I'm going to do that marketing time. I'm going to be acting as if showing up, getting dressed, <laughs> ready to go, like fully showing up. Like I've got clients. And then the more we act as mm-hmm. if the universe like is hearing us and it's going, oh, she's ready for clients. Like the unit when you're ready, the universe will send them. She's showing up. She's being consistent. She's doing what she needs to do. Okay. She's got the energy to hold it. Let me start mm-hmm. sending some people through. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what? That makes sense. I feel like one of the things that I've struggled with I don't want to say a lot in my business because I don't want to use a lot of negative language, but one of the things that I struggle with for the purpose of this, um, point is attracting clients to my business. And, uh, for a long time, it was that I struggled with the belief that I had value to add for my clients. And, uh, I've been able to work through that now. So I'm feeling better about that. But what you were just talking about, about holding the space for new clients, I think is probably my, my current hurdle in the sense that I always feel, um, a little overwhelmed and behind in the things that I feel I should be doing in my business and probably don't need to be doing, but should be doing. And that I'm not sure that I have the capacity to take on more clients, even though my budget says I really need them. Yeah. Oh, I I know that one so well. And it's then and it's then going right with what I've got. How do I simplify that down so I can receive the clients? And I get a lot of people coming in of like, mm-hmm. I need new clients, I need new clients, and da, 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 da. and there's a stress behind it, there's an overwhelm, like that anxious energy. If yes. you're in and you meet somebody, you like you're not gonna connect. Like for me, I would not connect with the opportunity of that. And so it's mm-hmm. then going, right, well, what's the version of me that is actually, and like really like getting honest with yourself, what is the version of me that actually can receive those clients? What is the version of me that has mm-hmm. capacity? And it might be like, you need six weeks of deep self-care. <laughs> 
Yeah, fair. <laughs> fair. Like getting honest with yourself because mm-hmm. like I think as well, especially in the self-employed realm, we we do push ourselves so, so much. So, so much. We be doing all mm-hmm. the things. And I know there's been times as well in my business where I'm like, there's no clients, there's no clients. Da, 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 da. And I tune into my higher self and they're like, you're just not ready for it. Like you can't hold it. It will mm. be too much. And so there is kind mm. of, I'm very much like trusting there is a bigger intelligence here in play that's like can see my future as well. And then there's been times where I'm like, going, I need mm-hmm. clients, I need clients. And and then no, nobody's coming. And a few weeks later, a couple of big life events have happened. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness this is where we're mm. at. So I'm surrendering a little bit into that, dropping into that and going, okay, we're working a little bit more intuitively and opening up to kind of what wants to come through. Mm. You know what? I have been through that as well. And I think that that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I think I struggle a little bit with the trusting piece, which I'm sure most of yeah. us do because it can be very frustrating in the moment, but yeah. in in the long run, in the hindsight, it's like, Oh, like, you know, that actually worked out really well. <laughs> I was, you know, my natural instinct, I guess, is to be like a, a problem solver. And it would be like, but how do you develop resiliency? And in the back of my mind, I'm going, I can't ask that because no one has the answer to that because for everyone it is a hundred percent different. And it is really just a case of you kind of just got to go through it and like figure it out as you go. How do you develop resiliency also is a choice. So you've got to Mm. choose it. Like you, you develop what you choose to develop, what you choose to give energy to. So, you know, if, if you're wavering and in your doubt and giving up a lot, like, are you going to be developing resiliency as somebody that is like, right, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try. I'm going to experiment. I'm going to fail quickly. I'm going to like, mm-hmm. you feel the difference in how quickly that person is going to create more resilience. So yes, it is mm-hmm. different for everybody, but then it's also a lot of resilience is just strength in yourself. Like mm-hmm. we've all had things that have tried us. Like if you are strong in yourself, you're like, I know who I am. I know what I'm doing. I know what I stand for. Even on a really crappy day, <laughs> like I'm just going to hold my mm-hmm. own and keep going. Like that's the choice of mm-hmm. resilience. So there's choosing okay. to be resilient. I feel like that there, there, you, there is something in here to play with this one. I kind of like, I'm like, go and go and have a meditate on that one and see what comes through for yourself. It's true though. I hadn't really thought about it in that, in that way before, but you're right because I mean, being an entrepreneur in general is challenging, but I feel like there are a lot of people that give up maybe sooner than they should have or could have because maybe they they haven't chose to be as resilient as they could be my business has been through the ringer in more than one occasion in the last year and a half since I started it but I know that this is what I want to be doing and I guess I'm choosing to be resilient in a lot of these cases and work through them but yeah I hadn't really I hadn't really thought about it as a choice before but I like that I wanted to share too because I don't think my listeners know this but um Emma and I actually chatted around the time I was considering whether or not I should start my podcast. And it was actually my conversation with Emma that I was like, you know what, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to do it. So I just, you know, wanted to give you a shout out officially on my podcast as a thank you for helping me end up in this direction, because it really was kind of a pivotal conversation. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I can do this. And you're like, go for it, do it. And we talked about, you know, practical strategies to manifest this podcast into existence so that was a great conversation i'm so proud of you well done look at you <laughs> go go get your even you. the, the go get great is like <laughs> amazing well well done and look at all these people as well that are listening in, in and all these people that you're touching and helping and sorry that sounded a bit rough but like you know <laughs> inspiring <laughs> <laughs> because you're brave and you're showing up in the world and you're doing things that might feel a little bit risky and a bit hard but like oh so proud mm-hmm. of you well done <laughs>
Thank you. I felt like it was very timely to mention it because we were talking about resiliency and there have been, there have been challenges even with this project. Um, but I really am passionate about it. And I know deep down that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, but it, it took having a conversation with you to know that knowing and feel that knowing. Um, but it's been worthwhile to kind of work through and choose to be resilient with it. Uh, on the note of beliefs, which is something that we talked about for me, I needed to believe that I could be a podcast host having never been on a podcast before. I was reading one of your blog posts. Oh, I'm really sorry. The audio has gone on my end. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. I must've just bumped something. Um, I was reading, uh, mm, sorry, I'm getting a notification that we're going to get booted out in 10 minutes. I guess my Zoom must have, uh, must have expired. Um, so we'll chat for a couple more minutes and then if you need to, we can just hop back in. Um, so I was looking on your website and I saw a blog post that you published recently talking about upper limits and that really piqued my interest. And I was hoping you could chat a little bit about what that is. Yes, upper limits are something I think we should all know about, especially if you're doing any kind of change work or kind of any development work. So upper limits are from the book, uh, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, incredible book, highly recommend. But they're basically our self-employed limits of like how good things can get. So, for mm, example, okay. it's like how much, you know, it's like the, the, the unconscious beliefs and limits we set to keep ourselves in our comfort zone, to keep ourselves safe. So how mm. much have we like, you know, been on a roll, we're getting things done. And then all of a sudden we get sick or something happens or this mm. is happening, kind of like we we unconsciously sabotage ourselves or, you know, we start, we create a fight or we create something because things are going good. And so as we're doing okay. this work and developing ourselves, we're like, oh, you know, we, we're working towards things getting better. But can we actually hold, can we receive things getting better? Mm -hmm. Okay. So kind of like the feeling of waiting for the other shoe to drop. Is that one of the ways that we can yeah. kind of identify some of those upper limits? Yes. Wait, like that sense of waiting for the other shoe to drop um worrying about things doubting things because as well like if you shifted into like oh things are really good like I know I've mm -hmm. had it with like money like you know I've manifested really good months and then drop completely because I'm like I can't I'm mm. not used to this what's going on I'm not panicking every five minutes like oh I don't I don't understand this like my my body and my unconscious and my subconscious is like what is going on like mm -hmm. we know how to be broke or we know how to do this <laughs> Yes. we've known how to do this and then I've expanded into this level oh it's too much I've sabotaged oh. or I've had a big launch oh I've then got sick and not like done anything okay so, noticing these levels of like it's about knowing what we will allow in our energetics in our mindset mm -hmm. um, and we've kind of got a it's like a okay it, it, it's kind of set temperature in our, our our system of like how much we'll mm -hmm. allow like how much goodness will we allow okay let's add some bad because we need to kind of balance it out <laughs> and it's, okay. it's a program so I highly recommend reading the book if it resonates with you um because mm -hmm. it's so well explained but yes it, it really is something to be really aware of as we're doing any kind of work because it comes up so often mm -hmm. yeah yeah, <laughs> like a lot in business. As you're talking, I was like, oh, in that case, in that case, and oh, there's mm -hmm. another example of that. Uh, so for those of us who maybe don't have time to read the book at the moment, do you have any suggestions from what you were reading about how we can kind right. of work on continuing to identify those feelings and maybe start to work through them? I'm going to add that to my to read list. Ooh, I should make a note good of that. question. Um you can always ask chat gpt for a summary <laughs> that is true that is very true <laughs> yeah um that is kind of my go to answer at the most of the times um but in terms of working through them the first it's becoming aware of them mm -hmm. having some time to self reflect to go within there's lots of different techniques to work on mindset and mindset reprogramming which is something that i specialize in as a coach 
Um, mm-hmm. If you need that deeper help to start to understand the layers and start to reprogram some of these beliefs that are going on. Mm. Um, you know, there's surface level ways of like doing affirmations, doing other work, but actually the work that I do really gets into the core of stuff. So even working with some practitioners that can do those deeper levels of belief change work okay. and do that side of things and clearing the limits, clearing the stuff. Cause a lot of the time, I found my limits have been created from things in the past or I've experienced mm-hmm. something and I've made it mean I'm not good enough. I can't get past this limit. And so like working with somebody as well, because a lot of these are quite unconscious and they're stored in the deep files of our being. And we're like, oh, we've got to like bring it out. <laughs> and so knowing how to do that will really kind of speed up. Like if you've not got time working Mm -hmm. with a coach or somebody that knows how to do this will collapse so much time like I've worked with people that spent a couple of years trying to do affirmations work and they're like nothing's going on and they do a session with me and we've collapsed it because we can get to the core beliefs of what's going Mm -hmm. on and we can also work energetically so working under the belief levels as well like what's going on in the energy what are we holding on to that's not helping Mm -hmm. us release that then shift the beliefs and then things start to flow okay okay it's like that it's really cool and I can see how that would benefit a lot of people and I was wondering if we could use me as an example to kind of help people if there's like a is there like an overarching concept that you tend to help the majority of your clients with (laughs) money comes to mind for me immediately but I you know there might be a better example um am I can, can I just psychically tune into your energy field and let's just see what's coming up and I'm just gonna see yeah. what is the best thing that we can work on I'm getting something like so I'm getting I'm good enough to speak my truth okay. I like really expressing yourself authentically around the throat and I get this I see this a lot with women especially like females mm. just like people that have put the filters on, been polite, been the good girl, done all the things that they should be doing. And then they mm-hmm. step into business and they're like, oh God, could I be kind of a bit more fierce and independent and <laughs> say my thing and get to the point? Cause I don't got time to like, you know, I can't sit around the coffee machine and like have a chit chat and like this, that, and then anymore. I've got to get on with it. And so just feeling that in your throat, like how does that resonate with you? It's something that I've been working on. I I did a Reiki session for the first time, probably a little over six months ago. And one of the things she's like, you have a block in your throat chakra. And then I was kind of like learning all about that. And it's exactly like what you said. You know, I have been a people pleaser for like 90% of my life. I've done, you know, all of the things that I thought my parents wanted me to do. And I lived that life. And then I realized somewhere along the lines that, I mean, it was the life that I wanted, but not exactly how I wanted to do it. And I've done a lot of things that were, uh, well, I, unconventional quote unquote, you know, like my ex rented my basement from me and we had a kid together while we weren't together. And just like all of these things that, you know, I kind of kept a little bit quiet because I didn't want to invite outside critiques into. And now I'm just kind of at a point where I'm ready to remove that block in my throat chakra and kind of share more openly about some of these things, because you know what, I am finally confident in myself and the decisions that I've made to get to this point that I'm at in my life. And I want to help empower other people to do that too, because society doesn't know what's good for us, but we do. Absolutely. And so like as I'm like cheating into the energy of like what's going on in your throat, um it feels it feels quite young. Like with with I'm feeling like early years, like five, six. Um and we don't even need to go into it. Like this is what I love about energy work is I don't need to like dig into things like in therapy, we can just go, Oh, this is this thing. Let me feel what I need to feel. And whatever it is in your throat, mm-hmm. like just like, like thanking it. Thank you for keeping me safe you know, these things that might be keeping us small or holding us back. Mm-hmm. Of my, our protection program. Like if I mm. hadn't tried to fit in, if I hadn't done it, you know, if we've learned to do this because it had a benefit. And so just feeling into mm-hmm. like, what was the benefit of like not being fully in your voice? Hmm. I feel like it was just kind of that like 
confidence piece that I needed the time to be not myself so that I could be myself and share that with people, because I think that's going to be where I'm able to create the biggest impact. Mm. So really feeling the gift of that and being like, thank you. Like, thank you for this gift of like, I now learn what it feels like not to have this gift and where my life goes when I'm not fully expressing myself. And then just a lot again, thanking this block and allowing it to release. It just feels like it's like hooked mm-hmm. in there a little bit. I'm like, what is that, <laughs> that little bit here? <laughs> I'm like, it's quite a nice deep on this, isn't it? It's possible that I haven't moved through it 100%. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about this throw. Yeah. So you're probably right. I think there's, yeah, <laughs> I think there's probably still a little bit more work that I can do here. But if you had met me like a year ago, I think it would have been a lot worse. Yeah, but I feel like we can get really like we can go into it and it's just this last bit here mm-hmm. and this release is like is it safe to let it go like what would it be like mm-hmm. if you didn't live with it like if you've had it this long what would it feel like is it safe for you to live without it because this there's going into the upper limit thing about like fear of the unknown like I don't know what it's like not to hold myself back mm-hmm. I've been told by society hold myself back because that would keep me safe and then it's going into that work of like, oh, I am mm-hmm. safe if I fully express myself. I trust that I have an awareness of when to express mm-hmm. myself and when not to. Like as I've got that adult understanding of when it's right to and when it's not. Because when this was created as a kid, I wouldn't have had that mm-hmm. understanding. I wouldn't have had that understanding. True. Okay. So what do you recommend that I do to kind of help release the rest of this I feel like it's already starting to unpick even in this call like we can move energetically move through it very quickly um and it's just been it's loving yeah. whatever's coming up loving like working through it of like thank you for whatever experience it was thank you for the gift of it thank you for mm-hmm. showing me what it feels like to have a voice and not have a voice and you know and, and, just, and thanking it and allowing it to release it just feels like this lower bit here of just, I can't just pull it out of you. And once it releases, it will just clear. <laughs> Immediately, I'm thinking some of like the, the journaling and stuff that I do in the morning. I have like a notebook with me all the time. That would probably be a great place to start. Uh, and then probably like my social media, because I've got a pretty supportive group of people on there that kind of follow me and what I'm doing. So I can probably be a little bit more like open there. I feel like that was really simple. I'm thinking now. You <laughs> played have the wheels a lot turning. very quickly. <laughs> yeah, you guys. You're ready for it. Mm-hmm. Ready for it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. I thought that that was really, really helpful. So hopefully the people listening did too. And in this case, if you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, I would encourage you to go and check out the YouTube video that we will be sharing with it as well. So that you can see me and Emma, like literally moving things around (laughs) energetically. Uh, I think that would be really good. (laughs) It's a lot. Uh, Oh, so we've been talking it, it is. You know what? I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, we have been talking quite a bit about manifesting and limits and beliefs and things like that. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask you what the best thing is that you've manifested for yourself. Oh, there's so many good things. Oh, hard question. <laughs> Cars and houses and like all, all the material things I've done. I think the best one, because I recently got engaged, yeah. is my partner. <gasps> Congratulations. <laughs> which, was, which was a beautiful, like we were in Greece. It was really lovely. It was very us. Like, and that, that has been such a good manifestation in terms of coming out of a previous relationship. And I did a lot of inner work on myself of releasing a lot of the old patterns, old things that, Mm-hmm. it served me that was very unconscious of and I wrote this list of a few things mm-hmm. like oh no I wrote this like not a few things like very detailed list of like two or three pages long all the things I wanted very specific wow and I, I wish it was as easy as that but it wasn't 
people kept appearing <laughs> things on the list like the universe was sending me mm-hmm. sending me kind of like it was giving me feedback and it was people that were like majority of the list but they're not mm-hmm. emotionally like, majority of the list. or they've got a girlfriend mm. or, well that's not right so it got me to develop mm. the list and develop the list so it wasn't like a one-hit wonder like okay. this, this didn't work <laughs> of like getting into the vibe and then yeah appeared and I didn't realize you know who he was until we kind of started hanging out and where it was and then a few months in I'm like oh my mm. god I'm on the list wow so, that's amazing it is possible, it is possible. good you know I wish I had uh I wish I had known this back in my (laughs) single days but you know what honestly what you're saying kind of makes a lot of sense to you because like I've I've never like formalized it but I had like a mental checklist of all the things that I wanted in a partner and then like Grayson and I were together for a while and then we weren't and then I was trying to see other people and it was like this mental checklist of you know what these people aren't ticking the boxes like Grayson did (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then, you know, we're, we're back together now. So obviously it was a case of the universe trying to remind me of the list that I had and just a couple of things that we needed to work through to make it like a very clear yes. Yeah. And you can totally use that technique for like clients or who you want to work with and be like, okay, well, I'm maybe this, this, and this, and this is how we want mm-hmm. the interaction to be. And then just holding those standards like high. Be like this is what I'm available. This this all better. Mm. Like, this all better. I kept going to the universe. This all better. This all better. And um just then because it then it allows it's not okay. just, it just has to just be the list. Like what if there's something even better that even I can't comprehend now? And there will be so many things that are mm, much mm-hmm. harder than I can even fathom. And it's like this all greater. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention while we were on here, you have some fantastic blog posts, by the way, when I was doing my research on your website, if you guys haven't checked out, I'll put Emma's website in uh, the show notes. You should definitely go and have a look at some of her blog posts. And one of the things that you talk about is uh, shiny object syndrome, which I have for my business, <laughs> like a lot. Um, and you said you tell your younger self to take a step back and focus on the things that truly matter. So I feel like we've kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but do you have any really good advice or best practices to kind of help us figure out what truly matters for us? Because I find the world is very full of noise and strong opinions about what you should be doing. And like, it took me a lot of time to find what truly mattered for me. And I would have really appreciated back then like a guide to help me get here faster (laughs) yeah I think this this is a lot of what I do and a lot of the work that I do and share with people really tuning into yourself and like clearing the space clearing the noise um to really tap into your intuition tap into what's true for you and simplifying so there's probably that time in your early 20s and and that is what you're like you're practicing you're testing things out you're trying new things or we have periods of our life where we're testing lots of things out mm-hmm. the thing with shiny object syndrome so we're talking about distractions and there's so many distractions mm-hmm. like oh my god instagram instagram dopamine dopamine oh oh there's a sale on here oh like but you're at the end of the day like wait where did all my energy go oh it's not been focused on what's worthwhile Mm -hmm. so you want to be focusing Mm -hmm. on things that you know the coaching industry they call it like needle movers and things that like kind of really shift and grow your business Mm -hmm. like bring it into a chill space it's just like what is worth my time and what is not what is worth my time we figure that Mm -hmm. out by testing things Mm -hmm. but test things quickly don't get caught up in other people's stuff and other people's drama and there's a lot in energetics here about like releasing energy that isn't yours and, and like being in your own energy field that like, this mm. really helps. Just like a lot of the time we're picking up chatter and when I would work a lot with empaths and sensitive and people and stuff. And the first thing I'm doing that like feels like a complete game change to them is just clearing off their energy field. Like they've been sponging everybody else's stuff. I'm wondering why they're so distracted or can't make mm-hmm. a decision. 
or wondering, you know, why they mm-hmm. like bring all these voices are so confused. And you're like, it's not your energy. So I see this a lot of like <laughs> releasing the stuff that isn't yours. And I know this myself of like, I used to do this. I was like, why am I feeling so anxious? Why am I this? Why am I that? And then realizing, oh, I'm super like empathic and psychic and sensitive. And I'm like, I can pick up on people's stuff. Mm. But understanding how to manage that, because when I Mm. wasn't managed well, it was really unhealthy. But when we learn to develop that and work Mm. with that, it really helps. And I think we all have a sense of intuition and understanding, especially Mm. especially women and mothers. Like you have to tap into your intuition to understand what's going on. So... That would be mm-hmm. a big thing in terms of that. But yeah, just answering your question of like what I would say to my younger self. Um, so you find the people that are energetically aware who will teach you how to clear your energy field. Like once you know how to clear your energy, mm-hmm. stand in alignment, know, and like, uh, you know, I teach people how to test their energy field of like what's true for them, what's not. Is it their energy, what's not? So these advanced techniques. Mm-hmm. You can really start to tap into like, oh, I now know that's not my energy. Or like if I feel a little bit wobbly or off, like even today okay. I was like, I came off a call and something wasn't right. And I just went and I'm like, oh, that's not mine. Clear my energy field. I'm like, oh, great. I'm, I'm back together. So I've got really quickly good focus back in. So okay. the distractions are going to come in. It's not mm. about distractions. Like the world is noisy. But it's quick. how quickly can I tune mm-hmm. back into myself Am I the loudest in the volume? Like, is my volume up? Especially if I've been listening to clients mm. all day, my volume's up and mine's down. Like, I'm out of the way. <laughs> but when I'm coming out of session, it's like, right, like, turn that energy down. Let me tune back into myself. Body, what do I need? Being, what do I need? Mm. What's important to me? And when you just drop in and like you you learn to tune into your being, you can kind of start to sense, okay, what do you need? Okay. This is the deep inner work that is like a common topic and thread of all of my podcast guests. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is is the place to start. Uh, I had a question with what you said. So you mentioned that if you're having a hard time making a decision that it can often be because you're like resonating energy that's not yours. Can you explain a little bit more how that works? Because I have a hard time making decisions sometimes and other times it's like not a problem at all. And I've always been very confused by that. Okay, so it, it does depend on the context of what's going on. Um, but if I'm okay, so if I was working with somebody, okay, what's the decision? This would be my kind of framework to get to the point. The first thing I want to do is clear off any energy. So it's it's like any interference. And it's like we're walking around like sponges, and you will feel this. It's like, you know, when you go and you hang out with somebody and they're really negative and draining, and you walk away feeling ugh. You feel like covered in their stuff, you're like, I need a shower mm-hmm. or whatever. You're kind of like, oh, <laughs> that's when you've picked up somebody else's energy. So that's more of an mm-hmm. extreme example. This happens all the time. Like we're picking up energy when mm-hmm. it's advertising people on the street. Like the world is a very energetically messy place. Mm. So the first thing we want to do is come into our own energy field. And then as we step in our own energy field, it's like right, the decision that I made sitting with it. If I'm going, if I have all the information that I need, I can make the decision. But if I don't have all the information, then I need to sit with that. If it's not yet, or it's not quite right, or that doesn't mm. feel right, or it might be that the decision is you're wanting to play yes or no, and maybe it's not yet. Maybe mm. there's another criteria in okay. here. That your mind is like, it needs to fit in these boxes. And I know there's, there's ideas and things that come to me, and I'm like, right, let me just plant the seed. Let me sit with it. It doesn't have to be a yes or no. It could just be, let me de- let that develop. I like some of that, but it's a no on that. And so, okay, so I like those bits. Let me put it on the idea shelf. Let me sit with it. And I know when it's the right time, like things come back to me. And I'm like, okay, this feels like a right time to go ahead with this. Okay. Okay. I think that makes a lot of sense. And what you're saying, like in my case, a lot of times it's like 
silly decisions for my business. Like, should I post this on social media today? Uh, and I find that I make, and sometimes it's bigger things like, you know, do I remove this service from my business? Like, do I stop doing this? And I've learned that some of the best times for me to make decisions is first thing in the morning. And I think it makes a hundred percent sense because my first thing in the morning is like directly after my morning routine. So I'm feeling very centered and very grounded in what I'm doing. And usually I haven't been on my phone. So there has not been noise and energy from anyone else yet. So that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A note to self, clear my energy field. I filter. think the Maybe other thing. Self, <laughs> like any social. <laughs> yes. Feature, like actually. Like being in the playground of noise. Like just release like and sending that intention mm-hmm. release let's return anything that's not mine and bring my energy back to me because mm-hmm. you're going into this like big playground mm-hmm. and yes it's on your phone yes you're in your house but there's huge amounts of like energy moving mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I think what you said too is uh, I'm very much, I guess, like a buckets person. Like it needs to fit in the yes bucket or it needs to fit in the no bucket. And I struggle a lot because I need like a not right now bucket, like what you were saying. Like I just need to put it on the shelf and let it sit there for a little while and then let it be the right time later. And that is what I'm not good with. When I have all these amazing ideas, which I feel like I have quite frequently, I'm like, great. But I don't have time to do it now, but I want to do it now because I feel like it should be now. That's a lot of what I consider the shiny object syndrome for me and my business. And I think I just need to get better at putting that on the shelf for later. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs entrepreneurs probably struggle with the same thing. So my, my tip for that one is I, like, you know how we all have spirit guides and angels. I have my admin angels and I say, can you drop that into my timeline oh my when it's the best time? So it's like, a lot of the time they're like going, oh, would you like okay. this? Like, I feel like they're feedbacking me going, oh, this is coming. Mm-hmm. I kind of sensed it. So it's all psychic sense. Oh, would I like that? Yes, no. Oh, maybe like this. Okay, we'll drop it in the next time. And sometimes things need gestation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I was looking back the other day and I was, mm-hmm. so my membership at the moment which is called Accelerate, which is all about developing your life and business and, and really working on that relationship with life and business. Mm-hmm. I remember getting these like intuitive downloads and these ideas about it three years ago. And I remember walking through London oh, okay. and having all these things like, I know I'm going to be teaching entrepreneurs that actually growing your business is about growing your life and your life needs to grow to hold your business and your business needs to grow to hold your life. Like they're very interconnected, but it's taken three years of learning, mm-hmm. of education, of all these things to happen to get me to a point where it's like oh it's now a membership it's now a thing Mm. just letting things flow when they Mm -hmm. need to and it's kind of all appeared at the right time I've not forced it I'm not pushing it I'm not trying to make it work I'm not trying to force myself into a timeline that doesn't work it needed that time to develop I needed that time Mm -hmm. to develop like three years ago I was not Mm -hmm. like you know like I've had an understanding of energetics I wasn't qualified. I hadn't done my Reiki trainings, the master trainings. I hadn't done all my other energy, like mm. theta healing. I've done all of these different energetic courses, worked with, you know, maybe 20 more mentors to get me to a point where I'm like, this is good. This is mm. now ready to go. I could have never cognitively okay. gone get That's here. This or better. <laughs> Letting go. Yes. Love it. Okay. So I have had an absolutely amazing time talking with you today and I'm sure my listeners have enjoyed our conversation. So if they're interested in learning more, obviously they'll check out your website, but I wondered if you could just take a minute and kind of share more about what your process is in your coaching sessions to kind of help people with these upper limits and the manifesting and the the energy clearing and all of this wonderful thing, all of these wonderful things that you've been talking about. Yes. Well, the first thing is come and hang out. Like I've got lots of different things on the go and lots of things happening. Um, in terms of how I work, I work with um, more advanced practitioners that understand subconscious work and energetics, and I help them really quickly get through their stuff. Like we really quickly collapse and clear things. Mm-hmm. And then for people just needing this work, I've got programs that really start to do that, that gentle introduction to it. 
bringing very powerful work, big transformations mm -hmm. in their lives, but, but meeting it at that level. And then I've also got um, a membership as well, which is like Life and Business called Accelerate, where we are mm -hmm. working with your life and business and like they are so interlinked. Like if you're trying to grow your business, you need to be growing your life and vice versa. And so there's lots of things going on. And um, I'm just feeling into like your listeners, what they need. Um, I, and I will send this to you as well. I have a manifestation recording for manifesting new clients. So I will send that to you. And if anybody else listening would like that, DM me yes. um, on Instagram. So it's at underscore Emma Unzuth underscore. And I will pop that over. So there we go. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, you have a podcast of your own, correct? I have an episode. <laughs> I did an episode. And realized, this is okay. the testing. Testing, failing quickly. I'm realizing it's it's really hard work. So like the fact you are here and you're doing it and keeping going, amazing. <laughs> we were having this thing of like apps and stuff, like testing it out, how to feel into it. Is it for me? Not so much. So I have an episode on Spotify if you want to go watch it. <laughs> but recording it and doing it every week. Okay. Um, didn't quite get that. <laughs> mm, fair, fair. Yep. You know, it is a lot of work. I am fortunate enough that that is one piece of support that I have in my business in Grease and Handles, all of that. So I just get to show up and have amazing conversations like this one. So I can't complain. You're going gonna, you're gonna to have to send me over whoever. All right. Well, I will definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for joining us today, Emma. And I will link all of this amazingness into the show notes. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you again. And I hope that everyone that's listening will reach out as well, because you really do have a way of helping people move past the blocks that they're facing. So thank you so much for being you and for being awesome and for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to Go Get Great. I hope you found some useful tips and tricks that can help you make life and business work together. If what I said resonates with you, please share it on social media and don't forget to tag at Brittany Miller Socials so that I can celebrate you for taking those first steps towards achieving greatness. Remember, success doesn't happen overnight. It takes dedication, hard work, and a lot of spirit. So don't be afraid to dream big and go after what you want. Keep striving for greatness. You get closer with every step forward, no matter how small they may seem. Until next time, go get great.